very warm welcome to all the attendees uh, for what is now the fourth uh, Pando Talk session. Uh, I won't take up a whole lot of time because we've got uh, an exciting uh, dialogue coming up. Uh, first, let me introduce uh, Mr. Atul Holkar. Uh, uh, Atul has a very, very illustrious and a rich sort of uh, experience in various fields. He's uh, an army veteran. Uh, he's a highly educated and qualified individual with, uh, uh, and I guess, I, un, I don't know how many degrees he has. We will let Atul talk about it. And uh, also a, a practitioner uh, engaged in uh, running the BBL PepsiCo uh, supply chain. So that's, uh, that's Atul. Welcome, Atul. Happy to thank have you. you here, and thank you for uh, uh, participating in this in this event. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Prashant Murali Kaiver. He is uh, the uh, AVP and head of global head of supply chain management uh, strategies at Tech Mahindra. So he's seen and worked with customers across the globe, uh, and he's got some. Uh, pretty riveting stories that you know you will be hearing from him and uh, what you're going to experience is really a conversation between uh, both these gentlemen who will be discussing uh, what I think is a very uh, exciting topic and uh, you know what are the risks and opportunities you know in these coming up arising out of COVID-19. Uh, as one can imagine the risks are uh, many uh, but risks and opportunities are two, so are two sides of the same coin. And so one's got to look at, uh, you know, plan ahead, but also look forward to many of the opportunities that is going to be uh, ahead of us. So what those are is really what this session is all about. So without further ado, uh, over to you, Prashant and Atul. Sure. Thanks a lot, uh, Ashok, for that wonderful introduction. And, uh, and thanks to Nitin uh, for giving that uh, uh, context for uh, the discussions that we have on Pando Talks. I'd like to thank Pando for the um, wonderful opportunity to exchange perspectives on this platform, on this forum. And I'm sure uh, we all know that there is no cookie cutter approach uh, to managing risks. Um, and as you rightly put it, and very well articulated that uh, risks and opportunities are um, two sides of the same coin. So. Uh, the, the current context uh, of risk um, is, I should say, no different from the earlier risks, but also different in a lot of ways from the earlier risks that we have seen. And uh, one thing that uh, comes to my mind is um, the uh, famous quote by Donald Rumsfeld, one of the U.S. congressmen and also uh, U.S. Uh, Defense Secretary of State. He had said, there are known knowns, there are known unknowns, and there are unknown unknowns. So what we are facing today is somewhere between a, a unknown unknown, which is like a black swan uh, and a, a known unknown. That's my view, but people might want to disagree, but uh, uh, because we, uh, at some point in time, we knew what's coming. And I would say that the uh, ability to react to a supply chain risk uh, is not a, a reactionary, uh, component. Uh, it has a, a little bit of a reactionary component, but it is also about how you manage risk during the, the good times or the normal times that to a large extent um, um, uh, determines how you manage risk uh, during the uncertain times. So, so um, from what I have seen, definitely there has been a lot of, uh, uh, there's been a paradigm shift in, in change of thinking on supply chain. Supply chain has gone to the boardroom in the last a uh, couple of decades. I'm very happy to be uh, part of this um, uh, whole discussion on, on um, uh, operationalizing some of the strategies uh, from a supply chain risk uh, mitigation point of view. A couple of things that I just want to share uh, before we start the discussion with Atul. Atul comes with a very huge uh, uh, background, very deep um, expertise and uh, depth of knowledge across various organizations, especially from uh, being an army veteran, he brings in a lot of um, robustness to, to thinking. So just a couple of quick um, perspectives that I wanted to share before we start our discussion is that supply chains are definitely uh, 
come a long way from being a linear to a much more circular or cradle to cradle kind of supply chains. And they're also far flung uh, in the sense, you know, distributed globally. And uh, some of them are complex. So the, the VUCA element, the, the propensity for any of these elements, which is uh, uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity playing on supply chains is immense. Uh, and having said that, I would also say uh, from my experience that I am seeing a, a common element 80, 80, 70 to 80% of the times across supply chains, be it in telecom, uh, being in a whiskey industry where I work very close, for, closely. For example, uh, if I look at the discrete manufacturing of, of Toyota and compare it with the, the whiskey, uh, scotch whiskey manufacturing, there are a lot of similar elements, just uh, including the just-in-time element, the hijunka, or uh, the the process of uh, production leveling and stuff like that. Uh, also across various uh, supply chains, like manufacturing, uh, as I said, or, uh, which I already mentioned, and then you have pharma supply chains, you have healthcare, a lot of them, and all of them have been uh, impacted to different uh, varying degrees, right? But as I said, there is a common element, 70 to 80% is the same. Uh, even the simple supply chain that we have of a chiki, right? The, the uh, Kadlai Mithai, as I say in Tamil, or you know, the uh, Lonavala chiki, for example, is, uh, also has a supply chain because the, the Chaiwala or the uh, Panwala, who has the uh, chiki in an in a, um, in a open container, when I say open, you know, it's like a glass container, right? He does a replenishment using principles of supply chain. He might not know it. Right? For example, if there is a um, fixed time variable quantity or a fixed quantity variable time replenishment that he does. So if it, if it goes to 20% level, he, replenish it, uh, he replenishes that automatically. So there is a, something like a Kanban or just in time. So you can always expect, expect that uh, chiki to be fresh. And the guy who delivers that also is going through the, uh, maybe a traveling salesman algorithm uh, for all that you know. So. Uh, whether a, a, a supply chain is, is simple or complex depends a lot on, on the process element uh, that comes into play. So uh, what we have seen over the last uh, three or four months is 94%, and this comes from one of the um, consulting firms that say 94% of all supply chains have been impacted uh, across the world. I was thinking it's, it's, uh, it's, my, it's almost 100%, but there's, there's a research that says that close to 90 to 95 percent of all supply chains globally have been impacted. So these are times, definitely VUCA times, as I said, and uh, much would depend on the uh, ability to tackle the process element. Uh, and as we go through uh, this discussion, we'll also share some of the perspectives coming in from the uh, opportunity elements that would help us build a resilient supply chain uh, for the future. So having said this, uh, and having shared some of these initial perspectives, I would uh, um, uh, turn the mic to Atul to share uh, his perspectives or his initial comments on um, what are the key elements of risk of, uh, from his point of view uh, on the radar of supply chain. And uh, uh, you know, what is he seeing, uh, or what has he seen, especially in the last two, three months? Uh, Atul, over to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Prashant. Okay. So, um, firstly, thank you, Pandu, for giving me this opportunity to come on this platform to uh, talk and discuss with a very large section of supply chain professionals. And these are the professionals who themselves are expert in their own field and industry, and they definitely understand as to what exactly is happening around. But this is unprecedented, you know, and when we talk about risk management, we have plan A, B, and C, and sometimes if uh, people like are paranoid, so they can have plan, plan Z as well. But this is beyond plan Z. This is something which you look, you know, put it at the bottom of the uh, paper or say miscellaneous, or if possible, something like an alien attack on the earth. So let's understand why is it different. Firstly, it's different because it's impacted globally. The complete planet is impacted. What is happening is not that there was a major uh, national, natural calamity that took place, but the fact is everyone, we talk about manufacturing, we talk about labor, or we talk about the distribution system, we talk about consumer. It has impacted each and every individual 
whether you are suffering from the pandemic directly or indirectly, but it's been impacted across the world. So it has got many, many more impact than purely logistics or supply chain. It has got physical impact, it's got psychological impact, it has got emotional impact. And then there is always the less, uh, you know, health impact. So someone, a lot of people still talk in terms of army parlance of saying this is something like a war. It is beyond war. A war gives you enough of time to prepare for yourself. It tells you what enemy is planning and there is always a flare up like currently the way we are seeing on the Ladakh border, right? So these things give you adequate time for preparation. And when you are ready for war, these rehearsals of war games have been done many more times. This is like a terrorist attack at a global scale. And at this stage, the sharpness and the smoke is still filled. It's just 60 days and the world is down on its knees. More than 220 countries, as per the last report, is impacted. Not only the global supply chain, as Prashant, you said, even the local supply chain. Why? What to talk about local supply chain? You look into your own home. Each and every household's own supply chain is impacted. Every day, now it's slightly better, but initially you had to really beef up your stocks for 15 days to one month of lockdown. So that is the kind of atmosphere on the environment which we are currently working. So it's not clear, it's just fog of war. What is currently happening is just we are realizing the entire impact of this particular pandemic. No one ever realized that you will have no reaction time for a pandemic like this before it actually starts impacting. Yeah, Prashant. Sure, thanks a lot, uh, Atul. Uh, excellent initial perspectives, and um, um, and also thanks for validating when you said uh, you know local supply chains. In fact, that's the reason I used the simple, uh, humble example of a chiki, right? That um, uh, also plays a very important. I mean, all all, all essential goods that to, to that extent. So, uh -huh. so uh, uh, would you also like to share some of your um, uh, perspectives from the far from the past, where you would like to draw parallels in terms because I know that you were also um, uh, a part of the uh, times when Ebola outbreak happened, and uh, you might have some perspectives to share from there as well. Yeah, so uh, I, I would would I say I'm lucky or not so lucky to have seen two pandemics, one the current one and one in uh, 2014, that was the Ebola pandemic which started from West Africa and slowly started spreading in Africa. And then this is the second downturn, economic downturn which I'm seeing, 2008 and now to 2020. See, what happens is most of these pandemics, first part is the disease itself. And second is the fear of the disease. Third is, the impact it has of that fear onto a regular consumer. Then is the government regulation that come into play and it shakes up the entire system. So when I was there in West Africa, we were uh, having at least five to six factories in West Africa in different nations. These factories and the markets were interconnected, having manufacturing bases in different countries and the entire supply chain network. Besides that, we also had a lot of imports taken from uh, basically globally. And this entire supply chain was so globally connected that we hardly ever anticipated that something like this is going to happen where we will be shut out the, from the entire world. And we were dealing with very basic products like dairy milk and then the infant. And these were to be supplied to the market. So we had to come out with the concept of a war room sit and understand what's happening in each of these countries, be up to date, and then take a lot of action in consultation with the lo local governments in each of these countries. So this is very, very uh, difficult because you are impacted, you're not in the office, the manufacturing has stopped, the raw material is lying on the port, and there is shortage in the market. So you have, and country by country, factory by factory, you have to pick up the pieces and bring. And when you have all this, probably the labor doesn't, is not there. When the labor comes in, the truckers are not there. So there's all kind of eventualities have to be dealt with. And as a good supply chain professional, you have to come out with one of the most creative solution to ensure supplies are not disrupted. Yeah, thanks for um, 
sharing those perspectives uh, i i can i can relate uh, a lot to uh, one of the recent engagements that i had with a dairy company in australia uh, and you know the the bush fires destroyed yeah. close to around 50 million acres of land in in you know uh, north and, uh, you know victoria uh, uh, you know south wales etc and that created a lot of uh, um difficulty for one of our customers because they had to they have a close to, they have a network of 40 to 50 uh, different warehouses manufacturing locations and they have their own 3pl uh, uh, customers so they had this fire risk happening at several of their warehouses so they had uh, they at one point in time they did not have a a mechanism to deal with that because information is key as you rightly mentioned and ashok also rightly mentioned in the beginning of the conversation so a a common process that would help you talk to each and every entity in the supply chain i think that's a fundamental thing right. uh, to be able to tackle that and then when you have trucks moving between various locations you know right from the port you have dairy ingredients coming in from china or from new zealand or from india etc malaysia or japan uh, they would need to uh unpack it quickly uh, go to a warehouse and uh, and then uh, from there it would be directed to a manufacturing location so their inbound and outbound uh, transportation costs were rising at the same time they had to manage the fire risk uh, so in the in the face of this risk that they were facing we had we had created a, a set of common uh, parameters across the board to be uh, able to communicate across the organization so what that created is it gave them insights to be able to react to circumstances in a in a better way so that the the route optimization and the load optimization on trucks can be enhanced at the same time you also have uh, e document uh, type of transactions that would uh, enable you uh, remotely operate so that you don't right. have to go and and uh, i think that created a lot of um, uh ability within the organization to be able to react to circumstances where you have fire or earthquake and stuff like that and we have i'm sure very many such examples uh when you look at the uh, the complete value chain itself you know for example from a demand point of view you know the demand itself might not be coming in the way you want it so the visibility to demand plays a key role or the demand demand may be spiking so you need to have a system that can balance your supply and demand on the other hand your truckers may come and say you know i want a uh, i want an increase on my current contract and then you need to rego negotiate you need to build a flexible contract out there at the same time <clears throat> your your production capacities and your capacities at your uh, suppliers suppliers uh, sources might be drying out so a lot of these are uh, the other ramifications uh, of of uh, risks uh, playing out right so right. from a mid term Uh, and uh, uh, sorry, from a short term to mid term to long term perspective, Atul, uh, how do you see this uh, panning out in terms of supply chain? In terms of what? Uh, how do we tackle some of these challenges? And what do we do in in order to plan better or anticipate better? And you mentioned, I, I recall you mentioned war room. I think that's one of the first steps, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you know, a lot of uh, talk onto the televisions and a lot of uh, various other forums I see is. that people are planning you see at this stage what is that maximum you can plan is of immediate nature there has been a strike if you can you know actually take the analogy to a terrorist strike so if that happens what can you do you can first start picking up your pieces start understanding when the entire noise dies down right so you can't say i can plan this is just a very short term and when i say short term from the medical news that is coming in this is going to be this short term is going to be at least one and a half years to two years and i'll tell you though over a period of time the smoke of the uh, war will go away but the fact is uh, that you will still be very very uh, dynamic to understand as to how the scenario is folding or unfolding yeah. Right. right so if you look into uh, short term the entire supply chain got impacted so we had inventories at different places the manufacturing unit had stopped and uh, the consumer had reduced its demand suddenly the market starts opening in certain areas and the demand starts spiking in those areas and suddenly you find that the inventory which you had kept in that started depleting very fast so this kind of a scenario 
requires a very different approach then i say is a middle time which is past one year to another two years finally when the stability comes in and after that is what mr modi the prime minister has been saying atmanirbhar bharat or make in india campaign when large companies start moving into india and the manufacturing starts replacing the manufacturing sourcing of china or from any other countries that will be a boom time so currently i have got three major uh, you know uh, points to say that how do you deal with this short term measure there are triple a's of supply chain one is the agility second is adaptability and third is the alignment so you got to be very very agile to understand what is happening on ground so you got to create a war room war room or a control tower in the office especially with the supply chain heads and professionals where you should have every day reporting that should be coming into the system to say yeah. which areas are blocked which are open yeah. which are impacted each every each and every warehouse and a manufacturing hub needs to be looked into you need to understand where the issue of transporters is coming what is the compact the labors are going to have and what how is the demand progressing in terms of sales in medium term you can start planning the versatility of the supply chain so you can look into the supply chain network planning you can look yeah. at the inventory yeah. levels that need to be placed and gone are the days for at least some time about lean inventory you got to be w sure of the inventory which you are getting you can't afford to have zero inventory at any place but then obviously the cost factor will come into play the shelf life will come into play so that will be medium term but one of the most important thing is besides when you are fighting the immediate war you should also be prepared for supply chain the way it will look like after say one and a half two years so what technologies do we require and technology can be used immediately after a month or two when things stabilize to start improving the supply chain performance across the board but you can also start moving that you would have a much more robust growth after one and a half years so start looking into technology which can you know actually ensure much smoother and better uh, visibility of the supply chain and its operations great point yeah great points atul thanks a lot so uh, when you are talking about the short term a couple of things that came to my mind are uh, some of my recent experiences working with some of the telecom or manufacturing customers because of course the first uh, element in supply chain is people right you need to keep your people safe and and uh, healthy so um, in in the telecom network for example what we see is that you have a, a, a the earlier days were a, a, of a monolithic nature so what you had what you have currently is that if a, 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 a technician needs to come uh, or to your house to be able to uh, provision some of the uh, equipment which is called the cp customer premises equipment he can go to the tower um, uh, where you know some some, uh, some like for example airtel or or um, optus or for example t mobile or verizon for example have close to 25000 30000 towers across the country so they can't possibly have technicians in each of these places so what they do is there's uh, a a virtual network that they can operate from their computer which gives them the ability to change the network configuration so especially during covid times what we have seen is there's been a 25 to 30% increase in uh, in the adjacent services not the not just the voice and and text messages but also the the adjacent services like um the uh, ott or or the top services like netflix and stuff like that so to enable this you would have employees working out virtually at the same time manufacturing where you would have a lot of touch customer touch points or or services you could have a remote um uh, field technician who could uh, also use ar and vr in fact i don't want to uh, jump the gun and go to technology as one of our key enablers which we will do in a in a in a few moments from now but i think these are ways in which in the short term companies are also taking care of the employees at the same time their customer service levels are not being impacted to a large extent and also the demand coming directly from customers are also being captured so i think these yeah, are so I think, you know uh, besides what you are saying few point which i missed in the previous uh, point was this that while yeah. you are looking into the manufacturing or the warehousing yeah one of the key responsibility of any supply chain professional would also be to keep its staff healthy absolutely 
So yep. if the, the kind of attention you give to your complete operation, the yep. medical responsibility of a practitioner of a su uh, supply chain professional comes out much higher on yeah. top, in fact, than anything else. Yeah. Imagine yeah. the implication of one person getting COVID-19 will stop absolutely. with that activity for at least 14 days. And yeah, if it absolutely. spreads into your people, you have a depleted strength of people even after 14 days. So my yeah. suggestion to the professionals who are attending this particular uh, webinar that your key deliverables to your organization besides supply chain is to keep people healthy, right? Yeah. And imagine in a scenario where the uh, attendance has to be 50%, there has to be social distancing that has to be done, it's going to impact the entire capacity of your manufacturing, right? Absolutely. The entire lead time is going to increase. So all these variables have to be factored in and then you talk to top management, which is the CEO and the sales head, everyone, to inform that this is how you plan to run the supply chain, right? Yeah. Another point is, which is related to the sourcing part, is the entire geopolitical game that is being played currently in the world in the midst of COVID-19 is amazingly new for this world. Look at the way China, which is the key sourcing, is not a, raking up issues right from India to South China Sea to you know Australia to New Zealand. They've already imposed a lot of sanctions. They have been today, Senate has uh, has passed in US to delist the companies from U, uh, you know, user, US browsers. So all the yeah. Chinese companies, if they go out, the entire system will change. Our Chinese yeah, will retaliate. Right. All this is going to hamper and by God forbid, if there is some minor skirmishes in Taiwan or something, then the assured supply chain from Far East is gone. So we right. should start looking at our inventory levels of raw material or finished goods or intermediate goods and then start looking for multiple sourcing. And why multiple yep. sourcing is alternate source will not work because of war or the health issue. If that alternate yep. source also closes, you will have problems. So start looking into it now for another two years before it stabilizes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, great point, Zatul. And also that brings me uh, uh, to um, a point of the, uh, the supply chain control tower itself, right? So that means there are, I am seeing this as, as three-step process. One is you need to remove the silos within the organization and create visibility uh, to key data sources, right? That is one. And then you integrate the organization in terms of how you share that data usefully to create value and then the third step is uh, create a system that can, in, in a lot of cases, take decisions in a, in a cognitive way. So we are just bringing in an element of technology here. But having said that, at a process level, so uh, very clearly, we need to do uh, a couple of things. One is when we look at uh, the complete value chain, we need to map out each uh, risk driver in terms of the, the, the suppliers, in terms of your manufacturing ability, your production capacity, your downstream supply chain, distribution networks, warehousing, and through to the, uh, um, and of course, you have to look at the planning uh, element uh, so that you, you balance demand and supply and the inventory buffers that you have across the touch points. So mapping it out completely, that's the first step. And secondly, you need to uh, keep your eyes and ears open at all times through an active scanning process. And this is both internal. When I say internal, for example, you have trucks and warehouses, you can use technology, uh, use sensors to be able to tap into that data and, and create uh, messaging uh, notifications for you to take decisions on the spot where you need, uh, uh, whether you need to pick up a, a, a material lying, lying at, at some point in the value chain or deliver something fast to a certain location or hold on for some more time for, for your truck loading or route optimization, stuff like that. And then you also need to look at external events uh, so that the disruption element to a large extent can, can reduce. So it's a, it's a, in, in some form or fashion, I'm talking about the good old PDCA principle, plan, do, check, and act. Uh, so that's, that's something that comes to my mind. So I think all organizations, I, as I said earlier, there is no, there's no one approach or there's no uh, cookie cutter approach to managing this. But uh, as we look at this from the midterm to uh, a long-term approach, I think there's a lot of that are coming our way. Uh, I think one of the key things is to redesign the, uh, the supply chain, 
or reconfigure or restructure the supply chain so that the process element is enhanced uh, to create an agile uh, framework for you to respond. That's number one. And the second thing is also look at at a transaction level, what are the data elements that you can capture? Uh, it could be in terms of uh, a, an automation that you can bring in or um, remote asset maintenance, for example, as I said, you can't go to the site, so you can remotely manage that using IoT sensors, or you could uh, also bring in se several other elements that can help integrate two parts of the organization. So, so what are your, what's your take on the opportunity elements that are um, emerging, uh, Atul? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, firstly to add to what you are saying is the concept of old time war room or a boardroom which takes decisions, you know, at yeah. a very, very fast level is very yeah. important, right? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You have to go back to the basics of how we operated supply chains. In right. fact, you have to, as a supply chain professionals, you have to look one step up to your boss and one step below as to what is your subordinate doing. Then yeah. you should have huge amount, number of ground sensors. These are the local people in each area of your operations. Whatever the technology yeah. says, whatever the news channel says, whatever the news media says, you have to have yeah. authentic information coming from your people. And Absolutely. also decentralize the supply chain. Allow local leaders or local team leaders to take necessary action and decision. Not everything needs to be done at your level. So general, uh, you know, uh, you can create certain rules for them, but then whatever way the local team requires or decides to do, it should be allowed to do that. Secondly, when you say supply chain designing, then you go to have multiple designs, plan A, plan B, plan C for every eventuality, because I can assure you, I have been part of the control room in Gurgaon for COVID-19, and we are anticipating that the life is going to only get tougher from now, and it is going to be worse by July, and then we expect another peak to come somewhere around November, and we still do not have the vaccine in our hand. Imagine 1.3 billion people to be vaccinated by any standard during the best of the peace time, you cannot do it, right? Yeah. So you got to understand the government will act, it will become rootless over a period of time and start having many, many road zo uh, red zones every day. So you have to bypass those red zones, your factories, your warehouses, your truckers, your hubs are going to be closed in a matter of 24 hours. So right. you should be very clear on this, that your planning has to be very agile. And yeah. this can only happen when you have hands on ground, sensors on ground, and every day, at least twice in a day, you should be aware what is happening. So before the end of the day, ensure that in the morning, you are ready for the next day. However, before you launch the day, again, reconfirm if nothing went wrong in the night. So we right. are in a war-like situation now for next one year. And if we want to do well for our organization, this is very, very important. Thanks for that, uh, Atul. Uh, in fact, when you're talking about sensors, a couple of examples came to my mind uh, with a couple of customers. In fact, um, you know the HP um, uh, program where they have a sensor inside the, uh, a, a certain type of cartridge, uh, which is called the uh, Instant Ink program. So uh, instead of having a lot of those cartridges lying in an organization, you know, it, it, uh, as soon as you use this, uh, it sends a trigger. And when it comes to a, a level of replenishment, which is like 10 to 15% above the reorder level, it sends out a signal to the back process to be able to order it back. So you just have even there just in time. And then you have, for example, one more example that comes to my mind was from a pharma uh, company. In fact, it's, a, um, it's called Spine Wave. You know, they have spinal uh, implants, not, not exactly a pharma company, but a spinal implant company. So they have an eye, uh, their solution called eye tracer where they have uh, a doctor takes out a spinal implant and, and put, puts it onto a patient in California and several other doctors could have done the same thing on that day in that state. So there is a central warehouse replenishment center kind of thing that receives this message and then you, you deliver on time. So, so a lot of these uh, principles will also help us uh, to become more agile and you use the word agile a couple of times. Um, you know, I, I always uh, recall the smile of um, Amazon, which is, goes from A to Z. Whenever I ask people what it is, they say, no, they can deliver anything from A to Z. In fact, they have taken it beyond that. They have created a new paradigm of agility and flexibility because the age old paradigm always talked about how many days it would take for you to respond to a certain 
um, a demand, right? So when you actually the the current definition has changed as per the um, the um, supply chain management professionals council. So they say when you go go onto an Amazon website and then you actually hold your cursor on a particular item it already sends a signal so it sends an alert to the back engine as to what you're trying to buy it it has an access so there's a next step is the accessibility part it accesses your information as to what's your buyer profile and then it takes a decision okay this guy out here is planning to buy a, a led lamp or something like that and then it does what is known as an anticipatory shipping so in in, in more than 25% of the cases you know a, a product is shipped out even without a consignee name and consignee address. So on the way, uh, en route to the customer, it can either get canceled and increase the order size and uh, stuff like that. So I think that is the new definition of agility, which can comes which comes in with the usage of of, of technology uh, in in the right uh, fashion. So uh, said that, I think these are also times when um, uh, the uh, the focus on learning. The focus on on doing something new is also um, coming in because most of us are working from home. We are trying to do uh, and learning is a co continuous process, right? So I think we have a lot of viewers out here who would also be interested in knowing uh, uh, what they would want to do during these times uh, so that they can be better prepared to create that resilient, uh, robust future. Yeah, Prashant, I can assure you, this is one of the best times if you want to really grow right yeah. because it has brought everyone to the same level whether you yeah. are an iitn or from one of the best b schools in the world yeah. today you stand at the same level yeah. and the world is again giving you a great opportunity to restart relaunch and reboot your career right absolutely because absolutely. The online information and online education has come to now that level where the world is going to recognize you for that as well, right? Yeah. And the second point is that somewhere we will be deleting a lot of our old knowledge which we, the way we used to work. Right. After five years in India itself, the way the current supply chain looks like will not exist. It will be highly modern, it will be very technical, it will be technology driven. Yeah. We need to be prepared, otherwise we will be looking like fossils out there. And the youngsters <laughs> who are coming from the best B schools or even from yeah. regular colleges are far, far agile. They're smarter, they're multi-skilled, and they're aware of the latest technology. So yeah. for us to survive and grow, in fact, grow much better, this is the best time. As far as education is concerned, there are a number of places you can look into. Few of the areas which will be very important is robotics, automation of warehouses, blockchain technology, artificial yeah. intelligence, IoT, yeah. and yeah. then is uh, data analytics. So yeah. these are major courses which are available now. And best is most of the courses are one tenth the cost which is it used to exist just about 60 days back. Yeah. I have purchased courses which are just about 300 rupees, which I couldn't imagine, right? Uh, one thing which I would like to say is one should be very positive for supply chain as a function. It's a sunrise function. When yeah. India will grow, and especially now we are in difficulty, there would be some problems in the jobs and salaries and little bit of issues. But within six months, it's going to stabilize and it is going to grow much faster than any other function. And if yeah. the other companies also come walk into India, I'm sure the first person they look for is the supply chain professional. Right, so good times coming in. So uh, thanks a lot, uh, Atul. I think we are coming to the end of the um, discussion because I'm uh, mindful of the time that we have. We have uh, close to maybe 13 to 15 minutes. Uh, a very quick uh, uh, concluding part that I, I mean, or, or you might want to do, Atul. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. what I would I would say, Prashant, what is the key takeaways of this wonderful yeah. session we had together? Yes, yeah. for firstly, the immediate action which we need to take. Yeah. Firstly is be grounded. You Absolutely. got to be grounded, have sensors on the ground to understand what is happening in each of your region of operation. Within yeah. the business, outside the business. Right. Be communicative. Don't rely on mails and WhatsApp. Pick up phones and talk to your team. Your right. team needs to hear you as a leader. 
they right. need direction they need support they need sympathy they need empathy from you be human understand their issues but be a very nice leader to guide them third is be connected within your team outside your team outside your business talk to sales people talk to your ceos talk to other people in the various different function and take advance information to have anticipatory action much before the business tells you what needs to be done one more thing be decisive there is no point of looking for someone else to take your decision you got yeah. to take the decision now suppose the truck has to be taken at a higher rate a warehouse has to be run inventory levels have to be increased be decisive and be answerable for those decisions long term upskill yourself and yeah. multi skill yourself don't get stuck to one particular operation even in supply chain so don't say i'm a warehousing guy or i'm a trucker right. guy or right. i'm just into analytics absolutely Take two to three major skills because of this uncertainty in the job at least yeah. those skills will help you out to firstly keep the job safe and secondly yeah. when you get opportunities you will get much much better remuneration than what you're currently getting Sure. Thanks a lot, Atul. I think very, very positive um, um, points out there. I think the the uh, the the way supply chain is going today is definitely real time insights and uh, actionable insights to create a very intelligent enterprise that will be very agile, as you said, and very positive uh, for all the supply chain professionals out there and for all of us, so that we can create more uh, positive synergies. Uh, from some of these perspectives uh, to create a, a very uh, resilient future, not only for supply chain, for, for the world and for all of us. So uh, thanks a lot, Atul. Uh, great talking to you. I, I would um, uh, hand it over to Ashok. Are, are there questions, Ashok? Uh, that yeah. Yes, there are a few questions. Uh, but first of all, let me thank Prashant and, uh, and Atul for fascinating discussion. Uh, you know, we, we saw multiple perspectives. We actually I didn't expect to hear uh, so many different perspectives, varied from, you know, experiences in, in West Africa all the way through to, uh, to, to Australia and the kinds of uh, uh, situations that were on the ground over there. So uh, plenty of takeaways. Uh, and I'll, I'll sort of uh, tie it back to some of the co uh, comments that you all, uh, you all put up, uh, spoke about. Atul, you spoke about, you know, system, the three A's, agile, adaptive, and alignment of supply chains as we go forward. A question that has come up uh, from one of our uh, panelists, uh, from one of our attendees is, and I'll, I'll sort of paraphrase it because it's a long question. Uh, it, the person is uh, Ashok Gopinath. He wants to know, uh, you know, we, we have, there have been certain, uh, 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 certain unprecedented sort of changes. This is pertaining, I think, to the, to the Essential Commodities Act and, and the whole uh, ACMP uh, sort of, or APMC, I forget what the acronym is. APMC. Yeah, so now that, that is going to disintermediate the whole supply chain as it pertains to agriculture. Uh, the question therefore is A, uh, what level of potential does it unleash <clears throat> on the country? Two, what level of digitization is currently available uh, to take advantage of this, to make sure that uh, the country forges ahead. Uh, that's that's on the on the sort of looking ahead you know, on a positive note. Uh, another uh, and coincidentally, I, you know, this is not rigged, but another uh, uh, attendee called Prashant has asked, uh, "Will there be job losses if this intermediation takes place?" Yes. So I'll uh, first answer the agriculture part, and then we'll talk about the job loss part. Firstly is, uh, this has just recently been announced by the government. The country, the way it is going through, needs to first stabilize to take the entire impact of this change. So it's not going, nothing is going to change for at least six months. Six months is good amount of time for all the organizations working in this area, whether it's retail or it's procurement or production or farmers, to start aligning, right? There would be enough of time available to understand this. Yes, in long term, probably when I say long term in current scenario, would be around two years, you will have amazing number of projects coming up. So there will be a lot of logistic hubs, 
there will be a lot of food, food uh, you know preservation centers so these kind of thing but 30 percent of the food current fresh food is being destroyed at in situ in location itself so that is going to be a big help for us as well and it is going to help all these retail industry to come up so uh, that there's nothing to rush what is going to happen is that you will get adequate time and there are enough of people players in the country right now available to take this change and it is going to give huge amount to the uh, jobs that, uh, to be you know uh, available in this particular sector second part of the job losses in supply chain uh, i am taking a webinar on sunday only on this how to reboot and relaunch your this thing uh, career job losses is going to happen there is no doubt about it but nothing is destroyed i mean at the end of the day you are available for yourself and much more experience and best thing about this job loss is it's nothing to do with your own abilities or capabilities it's happening across the world so if it is happening to every person in the entire country there is nothing to feel ashamed in fact you should take this as a lesson and become by a fireproof in fact you should take this break for a month or two while you are searching for the job to start skilling yourself start looking sometimes it's very important when you have a phone a smartphone to delete the applications so whenever the phone goes bad first thing they, they do is reconfigure so all the unnecessary apps will go and you can redesign your life and your career once again so if there is a job loss this good if you suppose you, you know you have not been able to achieve your dreams because you are so involved in your current job it will give you just the change you needed the kick start you required and you will see that within a year or two you will be at much better position than what you are today I, I, let me just add to that uh, in terms of there was a specific question about the level of digitization that's available uh, yes. and you know you alluded to that uh, atul when you said you need really sensors it's it's going to be you know uh, the network the entire uh, and every you know machine every device every uh, uh, every individual who's interacting with either inventory or information will will be equipped to to handle this across the network so is the digitization uh, uh, taking place has it already taken place the answer is quite a bit you know uh, today it's possible through at least you know what some of the things that we do at pando to be able to track down to a pin code level where a particular delivery is uh, we are able to connect every single individual on the delivery network now uh, you take that further upstream into the agri sector uh, it's not uh, inconceivable that once you know the private sector enters into storage and warehouse distribution etc to be able to manage to monitor and to be able to plan you know how storage has to be maintained and to manage the inventories and to be able to manage dispatches etc is is uh, i think uh, closer and nearer to us than it is further away so i think conceptually a lot of this has already been tried out uh, i think prashant would like to talk about perhaps the e chopal example that uh, that itc came up with a few years ago no uh, no that's right yeah Uh, yeah. but but yeah but yeah. the technology the technology to sort of uh, harness all of this together is uh, is already available it's a matter of configuring it together and uh, applying it to a particular uh, sector in this case agri and agri food distribution which is yes. going to be uh, you know unleashing this in in a country such as us at least that's my view absolutely a couple of additional um, uh, uh, perspective that i just want to share is one is when when people talk about job loss you know what's happening is uh, all these technologies are helping supply chain professionals to um, relook at the strategy and mundane type of uh, jobs are being done by machine i think that's one thing that we need to keep in mind the other part is that you know you you there is a, a law called the uh, ray kurzweil's law of accelerating returns so the uh, is going to be hyper everything including automation and um, and the instrumentation part uh, what it would also do as per the latest report of the world economic forum is that there would be a job loss but there would be more more and enough jobs created because of this new technology coming in so i think that is something which is very very positive so that means as atul you said we need to keep going back to the drawing board and see how we can be more innovative and more how in your words how do we become more creative, creative. 
that's the that's the that's the positive underlying message uh, that's that's what it is all about ashok ashok your mic mic is not uh, ashok you are in you are yeah, in yeah. Oh, i understand i understand um no i think we are right at the end of the hour uh, i would perhaps want to uh, you know come to the end of this this particular presentation what we will do is there are a bunch of questions that have come through we will collect them we will try to attempt to answer all of those questions and get back to you on those questions um if because i want to just leave a couple of minutes for prashant and atul to share their uh, closing comments and then thank everybody for 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 participating atul yeah uh, so the, yeah thank you thank you uh, ashok uh, and thank you pando to uh, you know uh, ask me to be here on this platform and to interact with you and prashant and also be in company of these wonderful professionals and uh, uh, i seriously i am a scholar of positive psychology and i seriously believe that the crisis is the best time to you know get the opportunity to grow much faster otherwise we were in a comfort zone and i trust me i uh, the technology which i have learned in last 60 days i would have taken me another 2 years because i used to always rely on my team to do my jobs right so this is going to be a good booster for us both uh, you know as a professional as a personal uh, as a personality booster so i'm sure this will do more good to us than all the disruption which we have seen prashant you what from yeah. you yeah thanks a lot uh, atul so i i just recall uh, one of the gnana uh, suktam from the ayurveda it says satye sarvam pratishtitam that means the spirit of scientific uh, inquiry was uh, rooted in the pursuit of truth so supply chain is one such area which gives a lot of opportunity to look at how you can strategize uh, your operations uh, to be to become more agile and we also need to go uh, come back to the society give and you know, contribute to the society look at ways in which we can reduce our impact in terms of carbon and uh, it's time to introspect relook at what we really need and then uh, supply chain is of course always there because uh, whether you are there or not you know um, um, you know we we continue to do uh, we continue to uh, be we need to be uh, continuously grounded as atul said we need to uh, be open in learning and we also need to uh, go back to the basics to be able to bring in innovation i think those are uh, a couple of concluding remarks that i had uh, in uh, in this context great thank thanks prashant thanks atul um we are on top of the hour it's been a pretty riveting conversation from all uh there's been some good uh some questions that have come through which we will share with you uh, over the course of the next day or two we would welcome your uh, comments your answers so that people hear directly from the speaker so they can they can uh, have their questions be answered uh and with that let me thank all the uh, participants today thanks for spending your one hour with us hope it it was uh, informative as well as it was insightful from listening to prashant and atul thanks very much see you on the next event in a couple of weeks